Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you back to the 100 Days of Zen Tangle Project 2021. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. Our tangle for today is going to be, I'm not sure, it's going to be up to you. We are going to do a Celtic knot called Triquetra. Um, this is an ex my sample tile for you. Um, this is based on threes, which um, is um, a recurring theme in knot work, particularly the Celtic kind, although these, this symbol has existed long before, long before uh, it was considered Celtic. Um, this this was, has been around since maybe Pictish, so long, long time, okay? So I'm going to teach you to draw this today in hopefully as freehand a style as possible without erasing and or too much erasing, hopefully. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to choose the tangle that we want to put uh, on this um, triquetra knot. Uh, this is also called the Trinity knot. It's all threes. Three. Three. Yeah. So um, this is a tangle called Xander. Uh, this is a Zentangle um, original tangle and uh, it is perfect for this kind of thing. Uh, this is the tangle that we did a couple of days ago by um, Anushka Wardenberg, which is called Pippin. And um, this would work. Uh, we can orb this sort of like we do um, uh, perk in this way, but we can also orb it the same way as perk in this way, okay? We could do Shattuck in here, which is another Zentangle pattern. And we did Rainbow Bridge way back, but this illustrates a good point. Any tangle that you choose must be able to turn these corners, okay? Uh, whatever tangle you decide that you want to use on this must be able to handle this corner turn, all right? Because you're, it's going to happen to you. Also, if you want to use a different tangle in each section, you can certainly do that. There would be, then you would have to choose three different tangles, right? One for each track. So um, this is what we're gonna do today, all right? So the first thing I want you to do is take your tile or whatever you're going to use to draw on today, and I want you to put it on a scratch piece of paper in your sketchbook or copy paper, whatever you have to use, and I want you to trace around that with your pencil. Just like that, all right? Uh, I meant to use, sorry, I meant to use a different um, pencil today. This is my my indigo blue uh, pastel chalk pencil. And this is, this is not necessary. This is just me trying to get this visible for you guys. Uh, so you guys use your pencils and be light with them, okay? You don't want to dig in. So this is our practice tile, if you will, okay? So the first thing I want you to do with your pencil is your normal pencil is to to trace in a border line right around the edge, just like we've been doing a lot lately. And again, I'm just using a color so that you guys are able to see these lines. Of course, if you want to use a color, I suppose you can. But uh, these lines, you're going to want to disappear, all right? So on, when you're, we're working on our tile, the first thing we'll do is with pencil, we'll trace this borderline, okay? Then we're going to turn this into a square grid. So we're gonna divide it in half each way. And try to, try to guesstimate correctly as far as where the halfway point is. Oops, it's not gonna be perfect and it doesn't have to be, okay? So now in the bottom two squares, what I want you to do is draw a diagonal line from the corner up to the center, okay? 
you don't need it in the top two. Of course, if you want to draw it in there, you can. It just won't, it just won't make any difference for you. All right, so this is what we're going to use to draw in our form today. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you, when you practice it enough, you can absolutely freehand draw this in ink, okay? The reason that I choose not to draw it in ink isn't because um, of anything bad. It's because um, it limits the choice. Once you have inked the outer lines, it limits the choice that you have as far as which tangles you can use. Okay, so um, what we're going to do, the very first thing, is we're going to start a little bit away from the center point on each side. We're gonna draw a slightly curved line like this. Okay, it's gonna sort of look like the bottom of a shield. <laughs> That's what I get when I look at that. Okay, and then above this, we're gonna connect these two with also a slightly curved line. Like this, all right? And we may need to adjust these sides after a bit, but they're okay. Now, the next thing I want you to do, and there is a step out for something, and I think it's called Trinity on, on Tangle Patterns that, that uh, uses something very similar to this, um, uh, but drawing it in ink to begin with. And again, the reason I'm choosing not to use ink is because I don't want to be limited on my Tangle uh, choices. Um, if you know that you're going to choose to do a Tangle that's, that's going to be inside um, two, you know, two lines and all of that, and that's cool with you, then, then you can draw this in ink. That's no problem. All right. So the first thing I want you to do is we're going to extend this, this bottom point out just a little bit. And what I want you to imagine now is how thick you're going to want your lines to be, or your ribbon to be. How much room do you want in here? Okay, do you want it to be thin or do you want it to be thick? And the more room you have there, the more choices and tangles you also have. Okay, so I think this is probably a good point to stop at. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look up here on this line and decide where that thickness is going to be. And I think that's where I'm going to put it, right there. So I'm going to draw a curved line that's going to mimic this curve and continue this curve until I hit that point, just like this, okay? And now I'm gonna start at the tip and I'm going to aura this line right down here until it meets this line that we brought out. Yeah, okay, now we're gonna repeat that. Turn your tile or your sketch pad or your paper, or whatever you're using. Okay. Now the reason that we used the the reason that we drew in this diagonal line is about to become apparent to you. Uh, okay. So I might have gotten this curved a little bit poorly. So what I want to do here is the same thing that I did up here. I'm going to imagine where my line uh, thickness is going to be for my for my uh, knot. And then I'm going to draw a curved line from here to here. And some of these are gonna be longer and some of them will be shorter and you don't need to worry about it, okay? Now sometimes these angles change, which is another reason I like to do pencil. It gives me an opportunity to adjust those things. Let's see if I can lift just a tiny bit of this out. This comes with an eraser. I wonder if it works. <laughs> so not great, but maybe a little less um, bold there. Okay. So now that we have done that, we want to bring this out just a little bit to the thickness that we're going to want. And from this point, again, I'm going to aura that line. I got that one kind of thick, didn't I? But that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now we're gonna turn our tile again and repeat over here. So this line, try to make a natural curve and we're gonna bring it about right here. Right, and this one, we've already got drawn in. 
Okay, so we're half done. So now turn this like this. Okay, and we're going to connect these. All right, this is going to follow under here like this and this. Yes. And now under here. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can get this. That looks okay. Yeah. So this this looks pretty big, but it's going to be okay. This one is going to look uh, the same way. So we're going to bring this through. And this is just a matter of hooking things up now. As long as you are stay right on these lines and and go right to the corners, these this is going to be fairly um, fairly easy for you to do. Now it does take practice to get a nice pleasing curve here. Okay, and none of these lines are set in stone if you're using a pencil clearly. So you have a chance to sort of sculpt them with your with your eraser and your pencil till you get something that is similar to this. And this is very easy to draw in on a tile. And once you sort of have the habit of this, then then you're going to find it pretty easy to put in. So uh, let's get a tile out. and put this down and see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna to continue to use my blue pencil just so that you guys can uh, be sure and see what I'm doing. All right. And again, they don't have to be perfect, which as always is a good thing for me. All right, now I'm going to divide this in half each way and try to do a careful job with it. Okay, and then I'm going to do the diagonal line pointing towards the middle. It's not quite right, but it'll be fine, okay? Now we're ready to start. I'm gonna draw in my curved lines. Okay, and again, these may uh, need to shift their angle just a little bit depending. Okay, draw in your curved line on the top. All right, and so now we're gonna start here. I'm gonna aim for right about here. Decide where you're gonna aim draw in a nice curved line. All right, now we're gonna extend this one out. Actually, let's go ahead and shift this and do this line going all three ways. I think that might be a better plan. I think we might have a better result coming back the other way. All right, so about here, Right? Okay, so here we are back at the beginning. And now we've got this line drawn in. This R line is easy to add. Then shift the side. Always start at the corner. Make a nice, a nice pleasing curve there, right? And now it's time to hook up. And they're not all going to be perfect, so don't worry if it's a little bit off. It's still going to look cool. And if you're working in pencil, and if you're adding a tangle, trust me, by the time the tangle is in there, no one is going to notice um, a few a few uh, misshapen lines here and there. 
okay? All right, so let's hook this up now. All done, all right? Fairly cool. So I'm gonna pull out some of these, uh, this diagonal line just so I don't um, have any confusion here in a minute what I'm doing. But the rest of these lines we can leave, okay. So now I have to decide what tangle choice I want to use. And I have sort of been planning to use Xander because uh, I have used that on knots before and it really has a cool result. Um, I really like the idea of perking this in this way so that it goes around, looks like it's going around and around. I think that's gonna be pretty work intense though. This is an interesting, uh, Pippin is an interesting uh, thought for this. This would give us a scalloped edge along the outside of this, which would be a very pretty result. And so I'm considering that. I can orb this this way, but uh, that gets, and, and it would be once I had it all shaded and everything, and since I'm working on gray to highlight that, that's going to be a pretty powerful fill as well and give you a very elegant result. So um, play with some tangles a little bit. Get out your favorite ribbon tangle and see if you can get it around the corner. Um, I really want you guys to choose a tangle that you're gonna enjoy working into this pattern because uh, you'll be doing it for a little bit, okay? <laughs> so um, I, uh, I'm really considering Pippin, seriously considering Pippin. However, I have not tried to get that bad boy around the corner yet. Let's do that real quick and see what happens. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna use my black PN here real quick. So if I'm doing Pippin. So I would need I would need to do that along the inner border. Or I suppose you could do it along the outer border. I don't know. And then so I would start in something like this. Hmm, okay, so mm, you have to be willing to be very creative on these corner things. Okay, that might work. Okay, so it's doable. It might not be the, the, the nicest transition But if you can do it, uh, it would work really well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. This is why I made a sample tile. I think I'm gonna do Xander. That's a pattern we haven't done before here. And so I can demonstrate it and um, I think it's gonna work out really well or I know it's gonna work out really well. So that works out for me. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a black PN on a gray tile today. And uh, the reason that I have not uh, worried about all of this uh, blue pastel is because it's, it's all gonna work itself out here. Now, when I am working here along this side, I'm gonna want this line to come out a little further because I am a little OCD. So that's okay. So I'm gonna sort of, um, I'm gonna sort of handle it like this, just a little further out. So this is where I'm gonna start is over here. And Xander starts with some little, um, with some little bands. And you can hook them over the line on each side with a little curve. 
like this, and I believe that the Zentangle Step Out does not have these closed in. You can close them in very easily, and um, I may at some point do that. We'll see. You want to try to follow the curve here. Okay, so that'll be there. And I'm going to go through here all the way around and just draw these little bands in and leave a gap in between them. As you guys know, there are many ways to draw a tangle. So you may see me do something you haven't seen before, or this may all be old hat to you. Uh, I'm considering putting a band right up at the top. I'm not sure that will work very well, so I think I'll put it just a little off that. So we will turn this, but it won't be a big, long thing. And now you can see why inking the edges isn't always the best plan, right? Okay, now this is a little skinnier than this over here, so that may be something I can adjust slightly as I ink these in. Just extend this over a little bit. Now you do have to be aware of what's going on here, right? You can't draw across this. If at all possible, you want to avoid that. So, um, you know, just as you're spacing these out, keep that in mind, okay? Keep the, the turns in mind. Okay, just a little further. Yeah, that should be enough. I mean, I could put another one in there, but that's okay. So the next thing you do on Xander is you start with your side lines, and you're going to, to um, bring these sections sort of together. And you put a little curved line if it goes a little bit outside your, your penciled line. That's okay. If you want your curves to be sort of fattened up. You can have them look however you like. And then my shakers, I choose, choose this pattern a lot because it is shaker friendly. So now we're gonna fill these with um, some sparkled lines, maybe wiggly lines, if that's what you've got in your toolkit today. That is okay. If you got too many gaps, you can get in there after them and add some lines. This pattern is really forgiving once the shading and everything is on it. 
um, the the wiggly lines are are just part of it. Okay, so continue. Take your time with this. You don't want to overshoot uh, onto your divide, dividing lines if you can possibly help it. And then just follow your curves. Sort of like we did in Zen Club Tower. But a few of you didn't like that one. I did like it. I think there's all sorts of fun possibilities that can come up from that. But then I've always been a rebel. I tend to go my own way. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. All right, let's go ahead and do this. I think Simba's about to have his dream. Simba, get that squirrel. I didn't get very many sparkles in that one, did I? Need to do a better job. Yeah, you starting to see it? One of the things I love about doing these knots this way is that you can choose whatever tangle you want and that completely changes the flavor of your outcome. Uh, this is a very casual kind of a rustic fill. But if you, if you put perk orbs in here, then all of a sudden you have something very ornate and jeweled. And so it's really cool to see the differences that pop up. At least I think it's cool. And then I'm usually pretty easily amused, so. <laughs> and when you have these turns like this, leave your sparkles up here towards the apex if you can. Since that is where a natural highlight might occur. There we go. So what do you think so far? Not bad, right? Ooh, this is a good hand position. Getting some good variable line weight here. Any chance it's in the camera? Yay! Isn't this relaxing? I mean, I don't know what y'all are drawing. Mine is relaxing. Of course, it's an original pattern, so th those are usually pretty repetitive and relaxing. Just sort of the point. I'm not having to struggle too much with the pattern to get it to do what I want, which is always a plus. Let's try this the other way and see if we can get some ink. 
course, my PN might not be happy about all this chalk pastel, but I think it'll work okay. Well, that's not my best one. That's all right, though. We'll get it. We'll get it. And this is another thing to consider, remember, when you're choosing your pattern, is the pattern that you're weaving going to be able to be woven over itself? Uh, because some uh, of the more ornate ones, uh, that can be a problem. I mean, you might be able to handle it. I mean, some of you, I'm sure, can. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, where I have had my issues in my experience. Samba, you're wiggling me, and I don't need to help. I really don't. I'm really good at the wiggling all on my own. Okay. Now, if I were better, I would, I would have rhyme or reason to my sparkles and be leaving them all in a specific place and all that because, yeah. But I'm not, you know, I'm just leaving them in random places wherever the, the non-existent life source might hit, happen to hit them. After that, I'm not thinking about it too hard. Plus, once we add the shading on this, um, that'll be the least of, of my worries. And these ones that are going behind, I'm not going to worry about uh, sparkling those um, that much um, because they were going to be in a direct shadow, so it's not going to be a big deal. See how those wiggly lines just fit right in? Yay for wiggles! So I love the Trinity Knot. It's one of the first ones that I learned. It's it's technically called Triquetra. Triquetra. I'm sure that has to do. The tri means three. Some of you have some experience with knot work. We will try to do a few more, maybe not as part as a part of this series, but um, maybe as something we do uh, thereafter. After the 100 days is over, it's it's anybody's bet what you're going to get. Hmm. Whatever I'm in the mood to do that day. And I'm sorry about not being uh, planned ahead enough to be able to, to um, give you the um, supply list early. But I literally choose what I'm doing usually 30 minutes before I turn the camera on. So, um, I mean, I normally have thought about it and have an idea, but sometimes I have not chosen the tangle until right before. 
and after I change, after I choose the tangle, then what I'm thinking about is what could we do with it? And that's at that point, then I'm choosing my, my um, supplies. So I think I like handling that that way. It gives me a nice, a nice sparkle on that apex right there. Oh, look at me go. Look at me go. All right. Whoa, Simba. All right. So this is my, my basic knot. Now I will um, want to erase a little bit if you've got a bunch of pencil lines like in here in the center. Now, one thing that is very common with knots, and usually that this is done because of the uh, pencil work and the planning and, and all of that that goes into them, is they will ink then all of the extra areas. And you may ink or not um, as you wish. Um, I'm considering inking this. I'm not sure yet what I want to do, and if I do, I'll probably use a water-based marker, which is probably not the best choice, but um, I'm not sure I have my alcohol markers uh, here available. Uh, but um, then you would, you would start by, you know, inking in these spaces in between. And so I am going to shade now really darkly. on one side and you can pick whichever side you want. Actually, I'm probably going to give a shade um, on each side of this. It's going to really enhance that uh, rounded look. Probably won't shade up here on the, on the crown, but. I'm going to give it a really nice dark shadow to one side. And the other side, maybe not quite so much, but still nice and dark. I frequently make that decision about inking the extra areas um, after I get this part done because I want to see where I'm at. Because you can, there are other things you can do with this with this outer area. Uh, you could add um, some kind of a background tangle if you wanted. You could um, you could you know uh, decorate further decorate this entity in the middle. Um, I can put little curly cues that come out here and there and make this really cute. Uh, so it can be whatever you might want to imagine it to be. But again, I like to to hold my my um, decisions about about um, inking anything until I have shaded and and sort of see where I'm at, and then I'll get a feel for what it wants. Now, you have just shaded along one side and you're also overlapping. So try to get the what the part that you are overlapping as dark as possible. Now, you don't want to go crazy with your graphite, but you do want to have some kind of uh, differentiation there, if at all possible. And uh, if if not, then dark is good. <laughs> dark is good. Where's my all right. And like I mentioned earlier, if you want, you can ink here, 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 and here, and then leave the rest of this open for something else if that's what you wish. Now, one thing I will probably do in these situations where we, are, we have this crossover is I may come in with my PN and darken these lines right here so that uh, it's clear what's happening there, if you will. Of 
hopefully I can blend out some of this charcoal. And of course I have one more surprise in my toolbox because since I'm working on gray, I can add a nice little highlight all the way around this and really, really accentuate the, the overlapping quality of this. So something, I got a little graphite crazy on that. And this could use some more down here. Okay, now, um, one of the things I was talking about just a minute ago as something I'd actually planned to do is to just come in here, here and there, and make these little squiggly lines that are sort of escaping. Yeah, <laughs> just because I want to and I can. Of course, if you decide to ink these, this won't help you, but um, it just gives a little personality, I think, and that's just me, for me. You can do some if you want. You do a complete different pattern if you want. <laughs> I like this. Now, I may put a watercolor wash back here. I'm not, or uh, another plan for me, since I use chalk pastels on this, might be to um, use some chalk pastels in the background to give me some color. So uh, I haven't quite figured it out yet. There we go. Is that too many or just right? There. <laughs> I think that's cute. All right, it's just me, I know. So right here, I'm gonna take my PN, easy sim, easy sim, all right. Right here, I'm gonna take my PN and go over this line. And if you decide you want to block these in, just put a little curve in there. Like that, yeah. And then I'm gonna do these. For the same reason, sort of redefine what's happening there uh, apart from the shading. Yeah. Okay, and so let's do this. Okay, so by darkening some of those, we have redefined and, and um, sort of uh, neatened up in here. I like that. And I may add that around, I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. The only other thing I think I may do is just put some tiny little ink flicks at the end of each of these coming in. I don't know if you can see these. This would be better done with a zero one or even better with zero zero five. Not sure I have a zero zero five in black anyway. 
And so I can treat these like that, and that might make this a little bit more uh, interesting. I cannot wait to see what tangles you guys have chosen to use on this. It's going to be a tangle free for all. Yeah, I like that. That seems to be a little bit more dynamic, right? By the way, Nancy, thank you for sending Mari the gift card. That was so sweet of you. He was thrilled. He got a gaming keyboard yesterday, and it plugs into the back of his Xbox. That's his gaming platform. And um, it, it has to be, it needs an extension cord, and that gift card is just the perfect thing for us to get the extension cord with. So I really appreciate that. It was so thoughtful of you to think of him. He was pretty pumped. I'm pretty sure that's the first mail. Well, he's gotten a couple of packages before, but but it's always fun to get mail, isn't it? Mari, did you want to say thank you? Yeah, I wanted to say thank you, too. Thank you very much. That was very thoughtful of you. you made my boy happy. Oops. I really need to switch my zero one for this. Let's do that and quit talking about it. What do you think? All right, where was I? Oh yeah, over here. Over here making a mess. Oh, that's much better. Well, the wind is blowing today, and we have had lots of sirens, so I can only imagine that we've got fires happening. This is, this is the time of year we have a lot of fires when it's dry and windy. Of course, luckily, it hasn't been too dry. This has been a wet year for us, at least from my perspective. I don't know how the water table is. All right. There, much better. Now this takes time and practice, and if you're new, don't make yourself crazy. It, you really do have to just dedicate time to it if you're gonna try this. And you cannot get frustrated. Your lines are gonna go the wrong way sometimes. It happens. Just be expecting it and don't, don't overreact. Remember, you want to curve them with whatever way um, what you're uh, hatching is curving. So since this goes down this way, your little hatch lines need to go down this way too. Okay. Find a good hand position so that, that it is easy to flick these in the right direction. Don't be afraid to turn that tile. So, yesterday, yes, it's one of those days. Yesterday, I had a comment. Of course, that was the day before yesterday for you guys, but I had a comment on one of the videos. I think it was the pickpocket video that was that really my picture uh, in the front, and how long ago was that taken? Implying, I think, that, and then the comment was, it's better to be real, right? And I'm like, what? 
Okay, so that picture of me in the front of the videos is from last year, right before we started the 100 Days Project. And I use that picture because it's a pretty good picture of me. And uh, yes, or today, since it's yesterday for you, today for me, I posted a picture of me at the COVID thing. So you know what I look like today. Guys, who cares? <laughs> what I look like and if it's a real picture. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm just trying to do my thing. Instead of worrying about my picture, let's get our pens out and draw. I just, I was like, well, and I messaged her back. I said, well, this is from last year. Oh, I was just saying you look pretty. I was like, yeah, of course that's what you were saying. Of course, now I don't want to hurt her feelings, but come on. What are you thinking? I mean, who cares what I look like? Who cares if I put a picture up that was 10 years old? It's not. It's really not. Because quite frankly, I look better today than I did 10 years ago. But that's not my point. My point is, why do you care? I was just so taken aback by the comment. I was like, why? First, I couldn't real, I couldn't figure out what picture she was talking about. And then I, as I was editing last night, I went, oh, it's this picture in the video at the front. But yeah, it's not an old picture. It's from last year. One year ago um, in April, I believe. I believe we started the 100 Days Project like April... 10th or 11th or something like that last year. I could be wrong. I frequently am. But yeah, outside on my back porch. The day before the project started or something like that. Trust me, I'm old. I have wrinkles. I'm not trying to hide. Do I need to start, do I need to start taking a daily pick? Because that would be scary. I don't do my hair for these, you know. <laughs> you know that, right? Most of the time, I'm in my pajamas. I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not. Sometimes I am in my pajamas. Not today, though. I have jeans on. So what do you think? Is the time worth it on this now that I'm almost finished? Is this more dynamic than it was before with this this little bit of extra work? Turn your towel, Cindy. That's not a very good one. It's okay though. This also works really well with a pen that's running out of ink, this flicking stuff. In fact, it works better. That way you get some, some variable uh, uh, line weight in there. So anyway, all right, so this is where I'm at now. Now, hopefully you guys will not have the blue problem that I have. Um, because of the pastels, and I really am thinking about using those to just um, put in a nice soft uh, background. But um, this is uh, where I'm at right now, and I hope you have enjoyed learning to draw triquetra. What a pretty trinity knot this is. And uh, this is something that you can draw over and over and over and give as gifts because this is a symbol that is very recognizable. And uh, by adding the tangling flair to it, it fits right into our to our uh, Zen Tangle um, art. So thank you for being with me today. Happy St. Patrick's Day. A special hug to all of my Irish followers. Julianne, a special hug for you, girlfriend. And I am going to see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for being here. <laughs>